once we filled it, now we need to display it. We, all we need to do is just display it. And so instead of writing all the code here, let's define another method, right? Um, so let's see, did I? Yeah, it's fine. All right, so, so this is one method, and this is the main method, right? I'm going to define another method above the main. I like to have my, my methods above the main method, and the main as the last method, because it, because it kind of looks logical to me that way. But you can define it below the main method and it will still work. But yeah, that's how I, I, I um, that's how I do it. But I mix it around sometimes, so it doesn't really matter. But it looks logical to me when it's above the main. It will work if you if you have it below the main though. All right, so let's create another public static method to display the widgets. Now we have it stored in a widgets array. So now let's let's have a message to display the, a nice message of telling us the wages. Because the question over here said that. Demonstrate a class in a complete program that displays each employee number and ask the user to enter the employee's hours and periods, which we've done with this method. And called it here, assign employee hours and period. It should then display each employee's ad identification number and gross wages. So that's what we need to do. Display each employee's ad identification number and gross wages. We will have the IDs in the, in the ID array. We'll have the wages in the wages array. And so let's create another method. So it's going to be a static method. It's not going to really... It's, it's not, let's see, is it, is it going to return anything? Um, um, no, it's not going to return anything. It's, we're just going to print our stuff stuff in the method itself. So let's make it void. It's really not going to return anything. So it's going to return void, which means it's going to return nothing. So public static void. Oops. We need to, we need to specify the name of it. So let's call it display employee wages. Display employee wages. Now, display employee wages. Let's define it in such a way that it's, al it's also going to accept the, the uh, an object, a payroll object. Okay, payroll object. And what ob whatever object, uh, whoever calls this method passes in, this payroll object is just basically will refer to that object that that whoever calls this method passes in as an argument. And so we have the payroll object, so we can do a lot with it because we can use it to return all the array. All the payroll, um, all the employee arrays, all the hours array, wages array, and so on and so forth. We can do a whole bunch with it. So let's we'll pass in uh, objects over here. We have the object, so we can pass it in when we call this method. All right. What we want to do is we want to create a loop. Okay, that goes that that, that can go through any of the arrays, just like this. So I'm just I'm just going to copy this because we have it's going to be very similar. So let me first fix the indentation, then delete everything in there because we're not going to. It's going to be different. But the, the loop structure is, is similar to this one here, um, similar to this one here, but because we're going to actually go through the array. We have the object so we can use it, payroll object, okay, so we can use it. Okay. All right. All right. And so we are going through the uh, any of the arrays, right? We can go through this loop. It can go through any, any of the arrays. So now let's display a message. Okay, let's have a regular system. Dot out the print ln. And let's start displaying a nice message saying that the employee with ID number. Okay, now let's concatenate it. Concatenate it with now. How do we how do we access the ID numbers? We have the object, right? And we know there's an there's a method in the object, uh, sorry, in the class that returns the employee ID array. So let's use employee. Oops. Let's use um, um, the object's name payroll object dot get all employee IDs, which returns the our, the which returns the our whole array, the whole employee ID array. But to access the particular slot, we can use it's it's in the index of that of that array. And we know employee index is keeping track of that particular index, the particular index we are on at the moment. And so I can use an employee index. So this is basically going to, for the very first time, when, when employee index is zero, that's displaying the first element in the employee ID array. When employee ID uh, employee index is one, that's displaying the second element and so forth, so on and so forth. And so the employee, uh, employee with ID number, this number, so it's going to be the first ID number, second ID number, and so on and so forth. It's going to iterate. Each time it's going to move on to the next ID number, and the next ID number until the ID until basically goes through all the, all of all of the elements in 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 any of the arrays. Okay, and so the employee with ID number, this ID number. Um, let's continue with the message. I'm going to 
concatenate and then I'll break it to the next line okay so the employee with ID number this ID number let's continue and say worked for now I just want to display the hours for that particular employee and so I have the object so payroll object dot I have a method in the class that returns the hours array which is get all employee hours and to access that particular hour, the hour okay I can use the index which employee index is keeping track of that for us and so the employee with ID number this ID number worked for this many hours right and let's concatenate this I'm going to break it to the next line here all right so work for this many hours and let's continue and say and and this much money right so let's now have the money which stored in which will be stored in a uh, wages array and so let's uh, we have the object the way we access the wages array is there's a method here that gets all the wages array get all employee wages it returns the wages array and so get all employee wages and the way we access the particular slot is using the index and employee index is doing that for us as you we, we are using the employee index to get the particular slots or element in that particular index okay and so now when we call this display employee employee we're just passing the payroll object we can basically refer to the element in the array in a nice nice message and so after we have calcul calculated the wages we can actually call employee uh, well since this is a method in the main in this in this file it's not in a class necessarily we, we can apply it to an object we can just call we can just call display employee wages and we need to pass in an object because we, we, we define it in such a way that it needs a payroll object so we, we say payroll uh, actually sorry 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 we have the object here called employee info and so we can pass in employee info so display employee the employee we just using the employee info object and it kind of makes sense it kind of reads well too it's you, you, oh, oops this is supposed to be display display okay so it kind of makes sense because it, can, it reads well you can say this is like display the employee wages from the employee info you can think of it that way but really what it is is this is the object we are passing it as an as an argument to this method and it's displaying the employee wages okay and so I think uh, we're done um, for most of it but we still have to do some validation and and use one more method which was in the program so let's try this and see if we have first of all have any errors before we run it I'm going to compile this and I'm going to save my payroll test program in where the class is so they can work with each other and find each other. All right, and I'll save it here. Now, if your class is not saved where your program is, you'd have to specify to your program the program that's going to test the class. You have to specify to it where your class is. You have to specify the path to where your class is, right? But I'm, in my case, I'm saving it in the same folder and so they should be able to find each other. I'm going to save this payroll test here. Well, we have a couple of errors. Well, well, the first thing I can see is that this is not terminated, right? So I'm going to terminate it and compile it. This is also not terminated because I, I guess I copied and pasted. So I'm going to terminate this one too, compile it, and then we look. It's fine now. Okay. All right. So now let's run it and see what happens. So run, and and it's, it's working. You can see it says please enter the hours for employee 565 and we can see the first um, employee is this 565-8845. I'm going to enter two. Well, I'm going to enter two for all of them, right? So I'm going to enter two hours and I'm going to enter two dollars for the period. So we should expect four dollars for each of the employees, right? So two for hours and now it says what's the period for employee? See, it's still on the same employee num employee. And so I'm going to enter two. Now it's going to move to the next element, which is or the next employee, which is four five two zero one two five. I'm going to enter two, and it's still asking the periods for the same employee. So two. When I hit another two, it goes to the next employee, which is seven eight five five two. And so I'm going to enter two for all of them. So two times two, two hours times two dollars. So I should give you four dollars, right? And so I'm expecting four for all of them. So let's do that. And then we should expect four for all of them. Okay, and we can see the employee with ID number. See, it's using all of them. Work for two 
and and folder I need, we need to format it but it we can tell that it's working and so let's change it well in the main program let's say the employee where is it the employee with ID number this number worked for this hours and and this dollars okay now we need to format the values all right so I fixed the hours now let's format the um, dollars now I could have used system that I'll print F to format the values I could have but um, um, you can also do it this way and just since this is the only value that it's a dollar amount I and mean, this is the only value that's going to need format and we can call this um, string dot format method around it and so let's do that you can also use this, the system that I'll print F um, statement or function method and so I'm going to call the string dot format method around this whole value here and the string the format well before yeah the string the format actually takes in two arguments it takes in first of all um, first of all how you want well first of all it takes in what you want to format here as a second argument and then how you want it formatted here as the first argument okay so it takes in how you want it formatted here two arguments um, a couple of arguments how you want it formatted and what you want formatted now what I want formatted is basically the wage the wage value here now let's make sure this is right yep it's right all right so this is what I want formatted and this is how I want it formatted it takes it in the form of a format string Right, I know I'm going to exceed this line, so let's break it somewhere around here into the next line. Let's break it here. All right, so string dot format. I'm concatenating with the string dot format formatted version of this value, and so it takes in what you want to format and how you want it formatted here. I'm going to it, it takes it as a as a format string with format specifiers embedded in the format string, and so I'm going to now specify a format here. I'm going to type in a percentage f. Now you can think of this percentage f as a placeholder. A value is going to replace it, and the value that's going to replace it is this value, the second argument. Um, and once it replaces it, it's going to replace it and be formatted in the way we specify here. And so percentage f is a placeholder, and the f here means that a floating points number is going to be replaced. Is going to replace this this whole whole value here. And it's also going to be formatted in the way we specify for it to be formatted. And so I'm, I want it formatted to two decimal places, right? And so in between the percentage and then the F, I'm going to type in 0 0.2, to, 0 0.2 to represent the precision. 0.2 means I want it formatted to two decimal places, right? If I wanted it formatted to, to, to three, uh, three decimal places, I'll type in 0.3. But because I want it formatted to two decimal places, I'll say 0 0.2. Also, I want commas where necessary I want to, I want commas to be you know to separate the value where necessary if the amount is a million dollars I want it to be displayed as one comma zero 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 comma zero 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 and so I'm going to type in a comma in front of the point two in front of the precision before the type and so putting a comma here before the precision before the type is going to automatically insert commas where necessary okay it's going to do that automatically you don't ha you don't have to worry about it and also I want a dollar sign in front of it so I'll put a dollar sign right in front of the percentage okay before all of that okay all right and so this value here is going to replace this format specifier in this format string okay this is the format specifier and everything is a format string I guess and it's going to be formatted this particular way all right so let's try this now run it just yes, let's still use two 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 for all of them two And we can see that the employee with ID number this worked for two hours and earned four dollars. And we can see this is formatted well. All right, so it's working. Um, the question in here also said that in addition to the appropriate accessor and mutator methods, the class should have a method that accepts. I think I'm off the screen somewhere. Is it is it the question? I don't know. Anyway. All right. In addition to uh, the appropriate access and mutator methods, the class should have a method that accepts an employee's identification number as an argument and returns the gross pay for that employee. And so we had a method over here, which we call it get employee wages by ID. We give it an ID and it searches the uh, um, ID array to see if 
it can find that um, employee and it, it returns the the wages at, at the particular index it found the employee okay that index is going to be the same as that index is going to be the same index in the wages array where that, that particular employee employee IDs wages are and so once we call this okay it's going to return the wages if the employee was found or it's going to return negative one if the employee wasn't found and so if it returns the wages then we want it to display the wages if it returns negative one then we want it to say the employee wasn't found and so let's test that method here let's use an if statement an if statement and say that right if if when we call when we call if when we call this get um get employee wages by ID method, I'm going to make a copy of it. So I'm going to well first of all let's use the use use the object. So if when we call this employee info dot get employee wages by ID, if when we call this method employee this is the object right and this is the method. So if when we call this me method rather when we call this method if we call the employee wages by ID and we give it, let's say, an ID of, let's say, the first, the very first one here, five, six, we are, we are basically telling it to display the wages for this particular employee. So if this employee info, if this employee info that get wages by ID, if this whole method call here returns, well, if, first of all, if it's not equal to, well, I'm going to say not equal to, not exclamation sign this means not not equal to if it's not equal to so not equal to okay so if it's not equal to negative one if it's not equal to negative one then we know that an employee was found and wages were was returned right we know that and so we can we can actually display a message right and say that system that out the print Allen we can say that the single employee well we can create this value okay we can actually uh, um ask the, ask, ask the user to type in you know um an employee to search we can do that we can ask the user to type in an employee or we can basically for pet t you know, testing purposes we can create a variable in main um somewhere here and, and call it um an integer let's call it single employee ID. This is just for testing purposes. We set it to this value. This is basically going to be the, the employee ID we are going to search for, right? And so yeah, let's set let's let's do that. And then we want to search for the single employee ID here. And so if we are searching for, if we are getting the employee wages, we are using the object to get the employee wages by ID by this single employee ID. If we if that returns negative one. Then that means that sorry if that doesn't return negative one if that doesn't return negative one then we knew we know that we found the employee and wages wages you know what was uh, was returned for that particular employee and if that was the case then we can display the wages and say the single employee with ID now we can concatenate it to the value of the single employee so it will now tell us the ID the single employee with ID, single employee, right? Um, and, right? And, and then we can concatenate it to. We know this will return. If it doesn't return negative one, then it returns this whole call. Oops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know this whole method call here returns the wages. So if it doesn't return negative one, then we know it returns the wages. And so. Let's call it this way. Now we're off the screen, so I'm going to concatenate it here. So the single employee with ID this now and this amount, right? Because we know this if the, if it doesn't return negative one, returns the wages. Now else, else. Now if it's it wasn't equal to negative one, if it if it didn't return negative one, then we know that it returned the wages. But if if um it returned if it, if it didn't return the wages, then we know that it returned negative one, right? If so, if it didn't return um, negative one, we know it's valid. But if it did return a negative one, then I, that means we know that the employee wasn't found. And so let's display a message, right? Another message and say that that the employee wasn't found. And so we'll say that a single employee would ID this, right? And just continue and say um, wasn't found. 
right, the single employee with ID, single employee wasn't found. So if it wasn't equal to negative one, that means that it returned the wages and there was an employee found. Else, if it returned negative one, right, else you can you can actually be explicit and say else if this whole method, method call is equal to negative one, then it wasn't found. But if, if, it, if it didn't return negative one, then do this, okay? Then, so if it didn't return negative one, then do this. Else, that, that means it returned negative one. And if that was the case, then display the employee wasn't found. And so let's try this. For the very first employee, I'm going to make his wage different. So for the very first employee, I'm going to type in five hours, right? And I'm going to type in um, $2 for his pay rate. And so I'm expecting $10 for the very first employee. Everyone else, I'm going to type in two hours and $2. And so $10 for the first employee and then $2, $4 for everyone else because two times two is four. So let's see. All right, and it says over here, the employee with ID number this work for 10, five hours and five hours and ten dollars. Everyone else has four. And over here we were searching for the very first employee. And it told you the single employee with ID this, okay, and ten dollars. And it was able to actually retrieve that particular. So that method is working. The method that accepting the employee's ID and returns their wages is working. And so now we well, all, all we have to do is just format it. We can just format this um Format this value here, and we can call the string that format around it here. And the same way, it needs how you want it formatted, and what you want to format here. Right? Yeah. And so we want it formatted as a floating point value to two decimal places, commas where necessary, and a dollar sign in front of it. Yes, and um, what else? What else we need? Uh, validation. Well, first of all, let's try. Let's just try with random values. Okay, and so we can see that the very first employee with ID five six five eight eight four had ten dollars. Everyone else had different amounts. If we change this to, let's say, the third employee here, and compile and run this one more time with random values, oops, I, was, I kept on typing. All right, and so we're looking for the third employee, right? And the third employee is this 789512, a single employee. See, it's $6. I it was able to retrieve that particular employee. Search for that particular employee and retrieve their wages, and everyone else has seen. So it's working. Okay. The only thing, the last thing left is, is validation. Um, and so it says, do not accept negative values for hours or numbers less than six dollars for pay rate. Okay. Um, for less than six dollars for pay rate. Oh, let's see. Um, do not. Where is it? Um, do not accept negative values for hours or numbers less than six dollars. Okay, okay. So, neg not, so no negative values for hours. So let's start with that. All right. So this is where we're asking for the hours, right? This is where we're asking for hours. Uh, and so this is what we want to do. Let's before we ask for the hours. Uh, actually, the very the very first time we ask them, please enter the hours, right? And so they type in the hours here as employee hours. So let's have a while loop. That, that will always ask them while, the, while always ask them to enter the pr the correct amount the correct value for hours while the while the value while the hours is less than um is less than zero. Right? Because it said no negative values for hours, right? So while one, one, as soon as you type in the hours, while the employee hours is less than zero if it's less than zero that means it's negative while the employee hours is less than zero then what we want to do is we want to keep on asking them right so do the same thing keep on asking them but this time around let's change the message a little bit and say please enter hours for employees let's let's change the message please enter um negative 
negative ion. I'm going off the screen, so I'm going to break it somewhere around here by hitting enter. And so we say, please enter negative hours for employee this, right? First time is going to be nice and say, please enter the hours. But if it checks, it says, it checks and it's less than zero. While it's less than zero, any time it's less than zero, while it's, while it's less than zero, keep asking them. And once you, when you ask them, give them the chance to type in the hours again here. Give them a chance to type in the hours again, accept the hours here and check again to see if employee hours is less than zero. If any time is less than zero, keep asking them and I like giving them a chance to type it again. But as soon as it's not less than zero, then exit out of this loop and go to the next one. Go to the period, ask, for, ask them for the period. Okay, and so let's see if it's, yep, yeah, it's good. All right, and so for the period, it says do not accept anything less than $6. Do not accept any value of us. Okay. So, um, yeah. And so, yeah. So, we, we can't accept anything less than $6 for for period. And so, if it's same way for the period. Same idea. We ask them, what's the period for the employee? We, we, we allow them to type it in here. And we check to see. We have a while loop in there. To see. While. <clears throat> the pay rate, so while the employee pay rate, while this value here is less than 6.00. If it's while it's less than zero, we want to ask them again. All right, we don't, um, I know I'm going to go off the screen, so I'm just going to break it here. We say, what's what's the period for employee this? Right, let's concatenate it with a message and say, more um, above, let's say above, six dollars please right the very first time we ask them a very nice message what's the what's the period for this employee we allow them to type in the value we check to see if the value is less than six while it's less than six anytime it's less than six right anytime it's less than six we want to tell them to to, to type in the hours again and so once we tell we ask them to do that we need we, we give them a chance to type in the period give them a chance we say okay type in the period again and then go back and check to see if period is less than six if it's less than six while it's less than six keep on asking them that. anytime it's not less than six then exit out of the while loop and then store the period that means the period if it's not if it if the if it's not less than six then that means um it's 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 either six dollars or or above and that's valid and so set the pay rate and then you're done you're done and so these these while loops are there to, are there to check to see if the, the entries are, are valid all right, and so now I think that we're done. So let's compile this and run it. So I think we're done. Enter the hours for employee this. I'm going to enter negative four. And as you see, it tells you now, please enter negative hours for employee this, right? I type in negative five. It keeps on asking me negative values for the same employee. That numbers doesn't change. And then let's go to the numbers here. I'm still on this same employee. And then now I type in a valid value, type in five. Was a period for employee the same employee? I say, I say four because I can't type in anything less than six for, for that, right? So I hit enter. Now it says, was a period for the same employee six dollars, please? I keep on typing four or three or two or one. It's, it's still asking me six dollars, please. I mean above six dollars, please. I mean actually uh, above. I guess I can. It's not above. Actually, it's um, it shouldn't be above six dollars. It should be six dollars or above. Uh, it should be here so we can change it later on but um six dollars or above please but uh, well it's not going to be for this program but then it's fine unless i compile it for this message to be seen all right so i type in correct values um six dollars that's fine now i move on to the next and so i type in negative it tells me enter neg um please enter negative uh, please enter negative. <laughs> Is that what I said? I said please enter negative. It's funny. You shouldn't actually actually you shouldn't actually type in negative values. Um, it should be please enter positive hours for employee. That, that was funny. I was entering negative. It was it was encouraging me to enter negative numbers. All right. 
He's into positive. Let's no. This is that, that's so bad. I need to compile this again. All right. Now we are dealing with the right values. So negative. We know it's not working. All right. Positive. So I type in correct. I type in four for this. It tells me to type in anything above six. I type in seven. All right. So now let me type in valid values. And then move on. And we can see that it's working. We're seeing correct values here. Um, and we can see the single employee with this ID, which is the third, has 56. And that's correct. All right, so this is working. Okay, so if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them as always. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, take care of yourselves. Um, I know that it's been like a, a week or so since I made a video. Well, I well I made I I published a couple ones like a couple of days ago, but I'm referring to pro uh, programs in general. Um, it's because um, I, I'll be posting the videos, but it's because I had an issue with my PC, and I've mentioned this a couple of times. But it's 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 fixed now, and so you'll be seeing videos, you'll be seeing more. I've actually felt bad in that in that couple of days that I didn't have the videos out. But um, thank you very much for watching, and also I've been seeing the comments that it, you know the videos are actually helping a lot of you. I I'm I am thankful. When I see these messages, it, to me, it's like it's like it's it's very encouraging. It's very encouraging, and it's like food to food for me. It's like energy. When I see them, it makes them. It makes me so happy. Like it, it really makes me so so happy. I was just telling two of my friends. I was just showing showing some of the comments, and I'm like, wow, like this is just this is just. Um, I'm I'm humbled by you know the fact or, or the, some of the comments people say, and. So people say that it's helping them more, more, more than tutoring, and I'm like, wow, like really? Uh, and so the, these messages are great, and I just wanted to say thank you very much for you know just being a being a part of this, and I'm glad it's helping. You know, let's all let's all learn together, okay? Um, so yes, the, these messages are really great. They're really great. All right, so if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them as always. Um, thank you. For, <laughs> I say that all the time, right? Yes. Um, yeah, but I mean them. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's become part of me now. <laughs> I mean them though. Uh, so yes, if you have any questions, comments down below. I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a nice sleep. Have a nice time. And I'll see you next time with the next program. All right then. Bye bye.